In this video, we're going to talk about how to get started in a career in HVAC in addition to which areas of the trade are the highest paying and most in demand. And I'll also tell you a personal story of uh, one of the things that I did to set myself apart as a candidate that helped me land my first job and several offers when I was brand new in the trade as an apprentice. And I will also go over some of the other things to look for when choosing a company or career path so that you end up with a career and job title that not only pays you well, but also one that you find fulfilling and matches your personality. And this video is actually in response to a comment from one of our subscribers. So I'm going to start by reading that comment for context. And on that note, if you have a question about anything HVAC related, whether it's what's the best type of HVAC for your home and specific climate or situation or troubleshooting help or just general questions about anything related to HVAC, post them in the comment section below because we do read to and respond to the comments and also use that information to create content that's relevant for you. So on that note, Let's read this comment for context and dive into the video. Mohib Quadri4053 wrote, Too good, bro. What would be the key to becoming a successful HVAC design and site engineer if I am starting fresh as a graduate? Is being a specialist work to our benefit or does any specific skill stack make us more valuable? So first off, great question. And there's a lot to unpack there. So I'm first going to start off with this specific job and job title and take it from there because I have some food for thought hopefully you'll find helpful. Now, as far as a career in HVAC design and site engineer, and what would be the best way to go about that? The first thing I would do is make sure this is even what you want to do. And I'll explain what I mean by that. And I'm not trying to talk you out of it by any means. Um, and it will make more sense later in the video when I start talking about some of the other career paths that you can take inside of the HVAC industry. Now, the job you described is going to be more of a desk job is my point. My first question to you are, is, are you sure that's the job that you are looking for and there's no right or wrong answer. But the reason I ask is because if you are wanting to be in the field and on site more and like working with your hands, for example, this position might not be a good fit. But if you have already done lots of research and decided that a desk job is more your speed and what you like doing, here's how I would approach getting that specific job fresh out of school. Now, if you look at most of the job postings, a lot of them will want you to have experience using the various design and load calculation softwares that are industry standard. Now, keep in mind, I don't have any particular feedback on which software because we are primarily a residential retrofit service and maintenance company. So we don't have to deal with building plans on a very regular basis because we're primarily dealing with pre-existing structures and existing homes and we're going in and retrofitting things after the fact. But when it comes to designing equipment and utilizing software, the extent of what we use on a regular basis is related mostly to heat load calculations. So if you wanted to set yourself apart, one of the things I would do is number one, I would research the softwares that you're going to be using. And two, I would create a showcase of sample work. Now it doesn't have to be anything crazy, but it should be relevant to the position. So for example, if you're primarily going to be doing HVAC design for commercial industrial projects, having a small portfolio of a couple samples uh, related to this is going to set you apart and let your prospective employer know that although you may be new to the industry, which it sounds like you are, given that you're fresh out of school, you'll still be able to do the work and learn quickly and have the skill set necessary or at least a basic foundation in place. Now, one of the things I did when I first got started in the trade to set myself apart was, and it got me a lot of job offers uh, right off the bat, was I made a video interview that I sent an uploaded video via a YouTube link. And this was an unlisted link. So if you're shy and not the type to make a video about yourself, uh, don't worry, you can send it to a limited number of people. But I can tell you it was my experience that every employer who received this liked the initiative that it showed. And it also showed that I had desire and was extremely motivated. And for me, I had no experience in the trade and I was fresh out of trade school. And so I literally made a skills presentation explaining the startup of a furnace as well as hooking up uh, refrigerant gauges to an AC system. And it's similar to the dummy system we have behind us, which is something that we use for training. This was enough to set me apart and land me four job offers before setting foot in an office. Now, to answer the second part to your question as to are there certain skill stacks that make you more valuable? The short answer is yes, of course, there are several as it relates to your specific job title, to be quite frank, I'm not 100% sure because that job title doesn't have a place in our specific business model because we're a residential service company. But I can tell you that in our field, there are several skill sets that make service technicians highly in demand. Now, the first highly in demand skill is boiler experience. Now, this is going to be specific depending on what part of the country you're in, be more of a commercial skill set. But in Colorado, in a lot of colder climates, they still have residential 
residential hydronic systems and skilled hydronics or boiler technicians are always in high demand. The last time we hired an experienced boiler tech, he had six other job offers on the table. And this is why we make it common practice at our company to always hire apprentices that are interested in learning boilers and make it a point to start training them on boilers within their first heating season because boilers are complicated to learn and therefore a highly in demand skill set. And it's also a value add that we are providing to apprentices by giving them an environment where they're able to learn that skill here. Now, the second skill that is highly in demand in our industry in general is sales experience. And this is true for both residential companies as well as commercial and industrial companies. The key is that good salespeople are always in demand because they are good at creating a low pressure sales experience for the company. And ultimately, they're just excellent communicators. It's not like you have to be a high pressure salesperson because we've all had the experience of dealing with high pressure salespeople that didn't know what they were doing and they made us feel uncomfortable and didn't read the room. But the truth is that good salespeople are always good at finding what is causing pressure in a situation, alleviating that pressure through the process of open communication. So that way, by the end of the sale, there's no pressure and it feels like a low pressure environment. And, you know, hopefully that answers your questions. And sorry, I couldn't be more helpful on your specific niche that you're looking to break into, but that's just because it's not what we personally do as a company. But hopefully my recommendations help you land the job you're looking for. And in the rest of this video, I'm going to talk about how to reverse engineer the best position for you based on what you're looking to do so you at least know where to start and how to land that perfect position. Now, generally speaking, everything HVAC can be broken in two categories. The first is residential and the second is commercial, not necessarily in that order, but the subcategories within these genres of HVAC fall either into retrofit and service or new construction, and there are very distinct differences between both. One of the upsides of new construction is that these jobs tend to be longer projects that last months or even years. So if you are the type that likes to work on the same project every day and see a big project come to fruition over a period of time, then this might be of interest to you. From a business perspective, however, the downside is that this is first thing to go in a recession because new construction stops almost overnight anytime you have a recession. And this is part of why our company doesn't do any new construction and specifically focuses on retrofit and service. Now, the benefits of retrofit and service have, you typically have new jobs every single day. So the jobs typically fall into the category of service calls, maintenance, or replacing a furnace or AC in a home or commercial building, for example. And the perk of this is that there is always this type of work out there. Uh, one downside is that it is highly competitive. So there are a lot of competitors in the space, but in my eyes, there is plenty of room to grow and there's always plenty of work to go around for good companies that are committed to doing the right thing. Another downside is that this is more seasonal because you will tend to get more calls in the summer and winter when it is hot and cold, for example. But this seasonality is predictable and not really a big deal. Honestly, it's part of the reason why I went into the trade because I'm the type that likes to work 90 hours a week and then enjoy deep downtime or time to work on the business in my case. And before we go any further, if you're enjoying the content so far, please smash the like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. It is a free way that you can show your support if you're getting value from this content and it is much appreciated. Now within this sector, I would say the best skill sets that are the highest paying and most in demand job titles are service technicians, especially service technicians with boilers experience if you are in a market that has boilers. For example, in Phoenix, Arizona, there are no boilers outside of commercial applications, so that doesn't matter as much there. But service technicians that know what they're doing, meaning they know how to troubleshoot a system effectively and quickly, are always in high demand and definitely earn their keep. And number two is going to be HVAC sales or estimators. Now, I've heard it once said that nothing happens until someone sells something, and this is why all established companies are always looking for skilled communicators and great salespeople because if you can drive revenue for an organization and are good at making customers feel at ease and like they are dealing with an ethical and reputable company, then you are worth your weight in gold because you don't just feed yourself, but you literally feed every other position within the company as well. And this includes everyone from not just the installers that might be installing the equipment after you all the way up to the apprentices that help as well as the people in the office who schedule the appointments, who pull the permits, who run the books and make sure that everything in the company run smoothly. Uh, these people are all counting on salespeople to make sure they have a job tomorrow, which is why this is one of the most important positions in any organization, both commercial or residential, and why this position is also very high paying. Now in the residential sector, it's going to be more B2C, meaning business to consumer. And in the commercial space, it's obviously going to be more B2B or business to business type of sales. And the key to finding a good company and good position is like I said earlier, you really want to start with the end in mind and reverse engineer your 
ideal position and play to your strengths. For example, if you like working with your hands, for example, and you're more of an introvert, I wouldn't pursue a career in sales, but instead I would develop a reputation of being an excellent installer and find a company that is committed to training you and investing you. For example, at our company, we use a software called SkillCat and we make this available to all of our technicians and it's part of our required training that they have access to by working at our company. And if you're not familiar with SkillCat, it's actually an awesome software. It's an app you can download on your phone that will walk you through basic troubleshooting. And there's a reason we started using it in our company and that's that it works. And if you're interested in checking it out, there's actually a link in the description with the discount code that will get you 10% off and a seven day free trial just for checking it out. But my point is that whatever companies you end up working for, you want to make sure that they are going to invest in you and your training and that you they are not wasting your time there. We do a lot of local training as well, hands on, on the job type training. And we also send guys to a local school called Don Leonardi, which is a local training facility in Denver that has excellent hands on training for service technicians. There's also other schools, ones in Austin called Central Texas AC Refrigeration School that qualifies you for a TDLR card as well that we will be utilizing when we expand to Austin. But the bottom line is that whatever company you end up working with, you should be at a place that invests in you and creates a career path for you to progress beyond just whatever your starting position is. For example, in the commercial space, there's a local company, RK Mechanical, that has an excellent reputation for empowering and training people and creating lots of upward mobility. They are a massive company and they do a lot of larger projects and commercial projects exclusively. But the bottom line is make sure wherever you're working, it's going to be somewhere where you are progressing and your skill sets are advancing as well. And if you happen to be in one of the areas we service or we're expanding to currently in Colorado and Phoenix, Arizona, we're always looking for motivated and hungry people that want to be a part of a fast paced and dynamic company. So we'll put a link in the description below where you can submit a contact form and inquire if you're interested in applying for a position at our company. And I know this is a little bit different video than what we normally put out, but we hope you found this content helpful and informative. So please make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And check out this next video if you haven't done so yet.